great, everyone. Welcome back. This is our last Tuesday discussion of the winter semester 2021-22. What a semester again. <laughs> We've been going from online to offline and to online back and forth. And um, But still, it worked out and we managed to uh, have every meeting. And um, actually, we have a fantastic ending today with two guests from the DFV, the Deutsche Alpenverein, uh, the German Alpine Association or G German Alpine Club, I think you would call it. Um, my name is Gesa Lüdecke, and I am the director of graduate programs here at the Rachel Carson Center. And together with Christoph Mauch, the director of the Rachel Carson Center, I am moderating the Tuesday discussion this semester, so we're alternating and today it's my turn and I'm very happy um, that we could win our two guests today from the DAV, Steffen Reich and Ludwig Kochinke. Steffen Reich is the head of the Department for Nature Conservation and Cartography at the DAV and here he's mainly working uh, for protection of the Alpine region that, as we all know, is a very sensitive uh, ecosystem and very sensitive to human interruptions. And uh, his work is concerned with a critical view uh, on further development and opening of new areas, for example, ski resorts or uh, in, um, intensive tourism infrastructures. And here Stefan is mainly working on climate protection. And maybe you will tell us a bit about the, the Klimaschutzfonds, the Climate Protection Fund in a minute that uh, the DRV has recently established. And uh, that is basically there to develop climate protection activities and climate protection projects in the Alps. Stefan, if I recall this correctly, uh, you've studied geoecology at the University of Bayreuth. And you started actually as an intern at the DRV in the year of 2003. But you started working for the DRV uh, on your position in 2005. And you've, uh, you, now you're working in the field of nature protection. And you're also a passionate climber and a mountaineer. That's what I read about you. And I think we're all excited. No, it's not true. But... <laughs> it's true. <laughs> what you found out. <laughs> OK, maybe we will hear more about that <laughs> later on. And our second guest is Ludwig Kuchinke, mm. that some of you might still know because Ludwig um, is a former RCC uh, Environmental Studies Certificate student. Um, he is a geographer, so he uh, studied geography at LMU. And Ludwig, I think you finished your certificate in 2020, right? So, yeah. I think one and a half years ago. And you've always been interested in mobility and how traffic congestion in our cities um, can be avoided. And since Corona, the traffic to and in the mountains has increased tremendously. And Ludwig is now looking into concepts how, how this can be avoided and can be actually solved sustainably. Um, Interesting enough is that uh, for his final project, uh, Ludwig didn't look into mobility, but he looked into music and actually into rock music and how this influenced the environmental perception of people and politics. And we never had the chance to listen to you in person since uh, you left and because all of the past semesters have been Corona semesters, but hopefully this summer we'll get the chance to get an unplugged concert uh, listening to your songs, I think at least one of them you wrote uh, specifically for this for the final project. So we'll try to do this this summer. Fingers crossed. All right. Um, so the work that the DRV and uh, Stefan and Ludwig are mainly doing is dealing with the issue that the Bavarian Alps are um, a small region, but of course a fantastic place and, and an attractive place for hiking and biking and mountaineering and which means more people, more cars, more touristic infrastructure, and on top of that, climate change, um, which also means more uh, pressure on the Alps on many different levels. And we are excited to hear from you how all this uh, plays out and um, what the DFH is actually doing about it to help and protect the sensitive ecosystem. And we will now hear about all of this from our two speakers. And everyone, please join me in welcoming Stefan and Ludwig. The floor is yours. You can share your screen if you like. Just a moment. Um...
sorry, I had a um, little problem <laughs> now. Um, yeah, thank you very much for the invitation to your Tuesday discussions. Um, we will start right now. Uh, the topic you already introduced, climate protect protection within our organization. And before we start, um, just a few words to our organization. You maybe know the German Alpine Club because in Munich, it's uh, many people are members. It's a quite an old organization, uh, about 150 years old. We are the biggest mountaineering association of the world and one of the biggest nature protection associations in Germany. At the moment, we have about 1.4 million members in, which are organized all over Germany in more, more than 300 um, sections. We also have a lot of infrastructure. We have uh, more, than, more than 300 huts and several thousand kilometers of paths in the Alps, also in Austria which uh, we are looking after. And um, we also have a lot of climbing gyms and other buildings all over Germany. So it's not only the focus of the, on the Bavarian Alps, so, but also on the low mountain range in, in, in all Germany and also in the cities. And um, of course, also in Austria. What you see here is our general assembly last year in October. Um, and there are several hundred um, delegates are discussing our main topic for many, many hours. It was a really long discussion, the longest we ever had on this topic. Um, and the topic was climate protection and what uh, has been decided and what that means for our organization, Ludwig and I will now explain in the next yeah, 10 to 15 minutes. So first uh, to explain how we organize, organize or uh, how we have a structured climate protection in within the DRV. We had uh, developed a climate protection strategy, which uh, was decided by the General Assembly and also behind it, uh, you know, beneath it, um, uh, concept, which also has been decided by the General Assembly. And we have a lot of different measures which shall be decided in the committees and which shall be developed within uh, through the next years. And what we are now explaining is more uh, are th is three levels. Here's the, the top level is the strategy. And um, there, the guiding idea, the principle is that, okay, first uh, one step um, behind, <clears throat> you could um, say when we were getting climate neutral, like many organizations, maybe you heard it in the radio today or yesterday, many organizations, they say they're going to be climate neutral in the year 2025 or something like that. But it's um, very often, it's not very honest because you can pay, you can compensate your um, emissions and then you are climate neutral. If you pay, uh, if you find a cheap uh, organization where you buy your uh, certificates, then it's not, not a big deal. And you have, if you have a uh, small um, um, boundaries of your CO2 balance, you can make it very easily. But that's not what we want to do. We want to follow this guiding idea that we want to really avoid CO2 emissions, reduce CO2 emissions, and then in the year 2030, compensate the rest. Of course, there will be a rest because um, it's not possible <laughs> at the moment to be um, CO2 neutral without have, um, compensation because you still will have some emissions. In the concept, it's described um, what mechanisms and um, yeah, shall ensure that we really achieve a reduction of the emissions. At the first, first uh, bullet point, we are going to balance all the sections and the federal association, which, which is quite a huge 
project because we are really we have 370 different organizations all over Germany from very small to really big. And then we have like um, a mechanism which is called the DFV internal CO2 price. I will explain that um, two slides later. What is uh, what what is it about? Then we decided last October that we want to install climate managers in each sections, each section, and then we want to implement a transparent reporting. We want to implement a climate protection platform with all the data of the balancing, with all the data of um, the sections, how they um, achieved a reduction of the emissions. And of course, we have to um, report every year to the General Assembly. And then you already mentioned, mentioned it, Giza, um, we have a climate fund. And since the last year, every member of the German Alpine Club spends one euro into this climate fund. If you are a member, you don't know that because your organization, your section has to spend that money to the federal association. And we are managing this climate fund and we are funding um, superior measures with it, which um, help all the sections to get uh, to achieve reductions and pilot projects, which can be in the sections or in the federal association. I want to mention also two commitments. We have um, decided also within this protection, climate protection concept. It's um, the first that we don't want to make um, short distance flights anymore. And short dis distance flights are this, um, defined um, less than 1000 kilometers. And we also, that's maybe easy to um, have uh, green electricity in all our facilities, which we already have in many, but not in all. So these are um, the mechanisms which are above, uh, not the, the many small measures, which a little bit more talk about. But first, uh, one more, um, a few more words to the CO2 balancing. We had there a pilot phase already in 2021 last year with 12 sections where we tried to find out what are um, the right system boundaries for us because to get CO2 neutral, that's a very, very important thing to, um, to decide that. Many organizations, they choose very narrow system boundaries and or the emissions um, outside the boundaries, they don't count to the organization. That's not our approach. We have a more ambitious approach and therefore we have also a bigger um, CO2 footprint, of course. And this year we are trying to support all the sections in Germany to um, make, to balance themselves with, uh, we are developing an online tool and also providing guidelines for the CO2 balancing. Now uh, to, to the thing I'm a bit proud of that we achieved it to implement it in the German Alpine Club because it was not so clear that the General Assembly will decide it. Um, we, I think we are one of the first organiza organizations um, imp implementing a CO2 price. Um, you know the CO2 price of the um, state, maybe it's um, at the moment 25 euros per ton CO2. And the CO2 is always the equivalence. And we choose now a CO2 price of 90 euro, which is much higher. And this money is, shall not go to the state. It shall remain within the section, within the organization and shall there be um, used for reduction measures. So, so um, the idea is that we have every year a lower budget, CO2 budget. And so, and the climate budget helps, helps, us, helps us to reduce these emissions step by step. We also have a goal, which, 
um, a lot discussing um, if we should have a goal until the year 2030. We um, decided not to do that. We first have a goal now for the year 2026 and to reduce the emissions about 30% compared to the base year 2020-22 because it's the first year we have a, a balance for our organization. And we have no other comparison. So that's what we are implementing now and, um, and are starting now to, to achieve. And of course, um, there have to be measures in different fields. And that's where um, Ludwig will talk about on the next slides, especially on mobility. But of course, we also have um, like infrastructure, which, which is also a really big point within our organization. Ludwig. Yeah, I will continue with the measures now. Um, the infrastructure, um, that's depending on certain um, regional levels. Of course, it's, um, it's connected to our huts, but also um, the offices and other buildings of the sections. And it's about implementing sustainable, energy efficient and climate friendly construction and also uh, the operation. And we want to um, introduce recy more recycling cycles for all activities and also the products. Um, one also uh, everywhere a big mm. topic about climate protection is uh, the catering. Um, it's important for us to implement climate friendly, um, balanced, and healthy diet, um, which can be assessed or which can be done mostly with ecological, uh, seasonal, regional, and of course less animal products. Um, the next field, communication and education, is um, very important um, to yeah, implement uh, the measures uh, within our asso association, um, including also the volunteers, um, the employees as well, um, all members, and also the public we have to um, activate for climate protection. And uh, also um, the financial and when, as, when investment has to be on sustainable criteria. And now um, the next slide, I will go into detail with mobility. Next slide, please. Thank you. Because um, mobility, the topic I work on, um, is the major emitter within mountain sports. Um, altogether, 60 or more than 60% of the uh, emissions are linked to mobility to and on the side um, of the activity. And we had the survey in 2014, uh, which evaluated the mobility patterns of the uh, DRV members to the mountains. And we found out that over 70% um, of the mobility uh, was done um, with cars. Um, one good point of, about this, that the share of carpooling is uh, sl slightly different to daytime mobility patterns. So, and, almost two thirds is done by carpooling and that's uh, better than um, on as at normal commuting but still there's some progress uh, to do because um, more than 80 percent of the emissions are done by car uh, by, by car are produced by car emissions and of course uh, as you know we have to get a shift more towards eco mobility styles that are more sustainable and eco friendly as the long distance buses public transport and bicycle and also um, that's why i um, took the numbers here we also have to reevaluate um, the mobility shares as Geza, you noticed before during corona the daytime trips uh, increased and um, we also communicate that it's better to have a multi-day stays because you have more uh, days of activity and best would be you have multi-day stays at um, nearer distances to reduce um, the emissions um, per trip and yeah and altogether we have um, like an average of uh, 5500 kilometer per year um, per member and um, almost more than a little bit more than half a ton of CO2 emissions. Um, 
what can we do about it? Um, next slide. Is um, we have to change our at first to change the opinion about um, eco mobility because barriers for a shift, uh, as we found out in the survey, was that there's often seen a missing connection and that the um, equipment you have to take for your mountain sports activity um, or the missing flexibility. But um, we want to argue more that it has also many advantages for mountain sports as well, because you may, can make tours um, with the possibility of crossing mountain ridges because you don't have to go back to the parking lot and pick up your car. So you have very new um, possibilities to make a tour, but also um, the ambivalence that we want to be our mountain sp uh, spot actives want to be in nature and want to enjoy nature. If we have, of course, um, less traffic, we can be um, more relaxed while sitting and planning our tour um, in public transport and be in the site which has less uh, noise and pollution and uh, less congestion and you don't have to see um, for a parking lot. And that's um, um, things you have to see about the advantages of, for example, if you go with public transport or carpooling. On uh, an, another example, that was right, thank you. Um, another example, what we can do, what we can implement as um, the DRV, is uh, we can't build up big infrastructure like um, railroads. Um, therefore, we can make um, political lobby or um, yeah, communication. But we can. We already did this last year. For example, the section of Munich implemented three new lines um, to the Graswangtal, Steinberg am Rofan, and to the Chiemgau with Sachrang and Schleching, that are pilot regions for sustainable um, tourism as well. Um, they implemented uh, free bus lines, and um, where it's not that. Uh, possible to go with public transport. And also, we together um, changed the schedule um, of a DB Regio bus. We co-funded it um, to the end that it's possible to use the regular bus more frequent on the weekend to be on sites um, which aren't reachable, which weren't reachable before. Um, with public transport that easily. So we can offer new mobility service. But um, the next slide will show you um, what we have to work on is um, much communication work. We have um, a platform that's called Altenverein Aktiv, um, which gives you um, the tools for your tour planning, for example, mountain biking, mountain climbing. And there's also a connection that you can um, see which tours are um, accessible with public transport. And we want, uh, now we are in the step, we want to um, develop it further. And the idea is to um, establish also a new mobility platform. So to use digitalization to make the barriers low, because now at the moment you have to um, use many um, mobility apps or um, the tour planning app and we wanted to make it more easy accessible to have one uh, everything in one platform for example the tour planning and the, your mobility planning or also carpooling which you can already um, do an Alpenverein Aktiv you can create your own tour to share your rides for example as well and we want to develop it continuously further on and we are also a role model in the uh, middle picture you see our new um, headquarter office. It's uh, in the north of Munich in the Parkstadt Schwabing. Um, it's a sustainable um, building because, um, or it has sustainable criteria because it's built on an old industrial building and the new facade is built outside mostly on wood and also the interior, as you can see, is much of wood and we have also high energy standards. But also the mobility there, um, we have to reduce um, the parking lots in the garage and establish like parking possibilities for your bicycles and we have to continuously develop this further on. And of course we have um, the possibility for a locker room to change your clothes and to um, also shower possibilities uh, in 
near the garage. And the next point is communication and education. Um, we're working on guidelines together with the sections and with an expert group on our um, touring program as well that we implement uh, touring programs that are more done with um, eco-mobility services or some sections are already working on um, buses for um, um, uh, tours they make together and also for the occasional program and we are also working on guidelines for example for um, the refunding of um, business trips that we um, refund, we take more of focus of the refunding on um, business trips that are done with public transport. But there are some barriers, of course, because um, at some points, access, especially on working um, business trips to the huts, um, we have to find um, solutions. Um, as well, so there are also borders. But we have to establish this and we're continuously working on with our expert groups and at, together with the sections and um, the sections also have their ideas. And now um, I think we are, gave you a little insight into the measures and the strategies about climate protection with DOV. And I'm looking forward to be this time on the other side of the Q&A here and discuss um, the climate protection at DOV. Thank you for your attention and we're looking forward for your questions. Mm -hmm.